Hey guys, Karja here and welcome back to another Diecast review. Now today we are reviewing Jimbo, he is the second car out of the cars I've ordered for uh, that I am reviewing. First uh, being um, Spearmint number 93, if you haven't seen that video then make sure to go and uh, watch that. And obviously I also reviewed Scott Tyler last video as well, I know uh, one or two of you pointed out that I put Miller. I don't know why but obviously I changed it. So thank you, um, I can't remember who it was, but thank you for spotting out that mistake, otherwise that probably would have been kept like that. Um, but yeah, we have Jimbo here today, he is a Demolition Derby contender, one of my favourites. One, because of his very unique design, and two, because of his number, because his number is 13 and my birthday is March the 13th. So. Number 13 is quite cool and I like I like the colours, the textures, the feels. I love like matte colours, like matte paint personally on die casts. I think it's really cool. And all the decals like what, what sort of, this looks like sort of barbed wire. It kind of reminds me of McQueen when he is wrecking up Radiator Springs. Um, maybe they got some influence from that, I don't know, but that's what it reminds me of on there. But yeah, very cool car. I like how the front of the truck is you know it's still intact and then the back is just and there's nothing there pretty much um but yeah we have also on reached 50,000 total views on the channel we are halfway to a hundred thousand for total views which sounds crazy to say so because of that and i've seen one or two of you in the comment put that you want to see a live stream there will be a live stream hopefully this week because of sort of celebrating 50,000 subscribers so make sure you stay tuned for that and hope you look forward to it i don't know what the theme's going to be yet Maybe some of you could suggest a theme, but I'm not too sure as of yet what theme I'll sort of do. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to Jimbo. I got a bit um, a sidetrack there. Um, like I said, he races obviously in the Demolition Derby at Thunder Hollow Speedway, which is the place where Doc used to race. McQueen and Cruz went there to see, because McQueen wanted to train against real racers. Obviously not knowing that the kind of races that went on there with the Demolition Derby, it, the sort of races, it was kind of a scene that didn't really relate to the film at all, but it was a very cool scene and the cars we are getting from it are really, really cool. I think it, it's sort of like, obviously because this film is all about racing, we've got the normal racers, we've got the stock cars, the next gens and the derby racers, so it's cool, like, they are pretty much the characters we've sort of been getting and then there's a couple of like, side characters, but I think in terms of diecast, this is sort of like the best film because we've been getting probably the best, like it's just all races, which has been really cool, which I really have um, liked. Um, I don't. There's not too much known, obviously, about Jimbo apart from that's his name. I think he has one one line. I think he's sort of sort of screaming when he's flying through the air. And McQueen has to push Cruz out of the way before he lands on them, and I think when McQueen is sort of trapped and. Um, or got, I think, missed for a sign stuck in his will. Uh, Jimbo's like, you, you better run or something like something like that. I think he's, so he's got like two lines or something. So he does actually talk and he does have quite a, few, a bit more of appearance than characters like Sig Alert. I don't know why they released him this early because you can literally just see the back of him when he's in a fence. So I feel like he's a character they could have released at a later date. But it doesn't matter. And I also wonder if we'll get Taco and Sig Alert re-released again in matte paint because them two... Obviously, McQueen and Cruz, as Francis Beltline or Chester Whippethor, they were both re-released in the five pack, the Thunder Hollow five pack, as um, as uh, Matt Paint sort of variants. So I don't know if that would be the case for Sigala and Taco. That'd be cool if it was, but I suppose it doesn't matter too much if it isn't. Um, but yeah, there's not too much else to say to, about Jimbo. So I guess we get on to the physical review of him. Um, so yeah, I'll show you first of all right here. He is very crumpled up. Which is very cool. The back I do like because it's got a lot more detail than I expected. Um, but yeah, as we come to the front here, we have a sort of... I don't know what this bit of plastic is. I guess it's to keep this bumper on here. But yeah, this bit is plastic and then this is metal and then this is plastic. So this bit, little bumper bit here, as you can see, it that sort of attaches on there, which is very cool. You can see all his teeth there kind of remind me of Fred when he loses his bumper. Um, yeah, as for this, um, speaking of bumpers, this bumper here is all texturized as well. It's all bumpy and it's got rust on it, which is very cool. We have his lights here, or where they were, <laughs> but they are now gone. And seems to be some sort of grill which is gone. See, I don't know if he was the same sort of make as um, Broadside, because when you look at it more closely, it kind of up to like, if you get rid of these wheels and that, you can kind of see Broadside in them, but I don't know. Um, yeah, as we come to the roof, we've got oh, on the roof <laughs> on the bonnet here. There's a massive dent here, which is once again texturized. 
and two sort of holes there. Don't know what they are. Um, and then we got this barbed wire stuff, which sort of is meant to go under the wheels, maybe. And we have his exhaust here, very rusty. He must be very noisy as well because it comes straight out of the engine. We have a sort of brown, brownie ready eyes, but then they're more brown with an angry expression. Very cool expression indeed. Uh, I do like it. Uh, we have Jimbo too, so maybe he's Jimbo the second, so maybe there was a one before him, like his dad or something. And we also have all the sort of dents here and maybe bits of dirt or just paint marks on that. And we have a big tire at the front here, it looks like a rusty sort of wheel. And maybe uh, maybe the hubcaps have been maybe that's the hubcap there and it's lost from the front. We have 13 on this door here, once again very dented. And 13 on the top as well with Jimbo the second there. It says wanted on the back. I think that's meant to be a piece of wood as well because it sort of sticks out. So that's cool. That's a very cool detail there. Um, now as we go into the back, this is very cool because you've got all the detail here as well and it's a really weird feel to it. I was expecting because the prototype picture this just literally just be red. But as you can see there, it's got all scratches there as if it's gone down to bare metal. And as you can see, it looks like bare metal on the inside as well because I was expecting it to look like this the whole way. But as you can tell, it doesn't. It's very crumpled and it just looks really cool. We have his little wheels here as well. I think the, the sort of tyres are sort of matte as well. They're not shiny looking. But uh, I'll let, try and get it to focus on this wheel. <laughs> there we go, kind of. <laughs> um, and we obviously the wheels at the same time. You can kind of see the axle there. They must have had to do that. Uh, and if I flip it back over this way. Got the little red bit there. Uh, some I've got a bolt in the middle. I guess that's to keep this part on, maybe. I'm not too sure though, because it does connect up. So I don't know what that's there for. You can also see it kind of raises up as well in order to sort of make it him sit like this upwards. So they got like the big axle there, but we just got all the normal stuff: Disney, Pixar, Made in China, all that. Uh, they got the other side, which is obviously a bit different. The 13s are not painted on as well. We got some more dirt and stuff. This window is also um, I think translucent, where you cannot see through it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's that's about it for Jimbo. <laughs> Here, he's very cool. Like I said, probably one of my favourites. Um, tell me which one is your favourite down in the comments below, or at least the ones we have so far. Because I suppose unless you're really eagle eyed, there's probably at least one or two Derby cars we haven't clearly seen the look of. So that would be cool. I think high impact and. Bill are the most boring ones so far because they're, they're quite a standard shape, uh, just a square boxy car and they don't have any dents or real damage to them. And like I was saying, obviously with Jimbo we have lots of damage and it's just very cool. But um, yeah, like I said, his main part is when he's like flying through here, sort of like that. Um, but apart from that, obviously we don't really see him much. Um, it would be cool if we got shorts like Carl's Tunes of the, of the der like Derby Racers. I think that would be really cool as well. Um, I suppose I can actually talk about his releases as well because um, he is being released more than once. He's actually been released with High Impact um, as well as being on his, released on his own. But because um, there's High Impact and Jimbo, Blind Spot on Pushover and Tailgate and Sigalert. And as you can sort of see, Jimbo, Pushover and Sigalert have all been released as singles. But I did notice something on the Smythe's website when I was um, the other day when I keep it out because I check every day to see if there's any new diecasts on there. I noticed that High Impact, Blind Spot, and Tailgate were on there as individual prices, like five ninety nine. So they weren't the double pack price. So, and but they didn't say anything. It just said out of stock, and it didn't even say expected in store. So I don't know if these are for next year. But if if it that's the case, that means that it's already been confirmed. Tailgate, Blind Spot and High Impact are being released by themselves next year which would be really cool because that means that I won't need to buy buy them again just to get the characters I already have which would be a good thing which obviously is good for them I guess they just sort of try and make money out of people at first who desperately want them and then for the people that await next year they bring them out by themselves which I suppose is you know it's, it's a good idea it's a way of them making money but obviously a bit annoying for us collectors, especially for things like 11 packs. There's obviously good, definitely, unless you've never bought cars before, there's an old, like, guaranteed that there's going to be at least one or two cars that you already have in there. Um, but yeah, that's about it for Jimbo. Um, thank you all for watching this review. I don't know when the next one will be out. 
it's kind of random when I have time to make a review at the moment. But um, thank you for watching this review. Um, as always, I will see you in the next video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and as always, I'll see you in the next stream or video, guys.